Hello everyone. We're going to hop right into this project. I sanded this cabinet that I have using the DIY weathered wood and also a little bit of salt wash. I mixed that up on a plate to get a nice textured paint to cover up some of this texture, bad paint job that was already on this cabinet. So using the salt wash that I sell on my website gives that nice brownie batter look to this paint and it adds some good texture to your project and the finish is extremely hard so it's a good way to put it on here so now i sanded all this cabinet and it i got all of that rubbery looking paint off and there's still some rubbery looking paint on the side but we'll grab and get that off later so what I'm doing is I took an old brush and I'm pouncing this salt wash DIY mixture onto the edges of this cabinet, giving it some nice textured look. You don't have to paint the entire thing with this color. You can just do the spots where you want a little texture. However, I decided I wanted to go over the entire thing. So then I just painted like I was painting and I didn't want the entire thing textured, just some of those edges. So you can go ahead and just use this paint as a paint also and just brush some of that smooth and get all of that fi finished um, the way you want it. So I do have to admit that I should have taken these knobs off. I was going to paint them, so I thought I'd leave them on, but then when once I was done, I was like, oh, I needed to take those off. So you'll see that in a bit. Here it is all drying. And uh, then here's the knobs where I took them off and now all that paint is peeling out, some rubbery paint is peeling off of them. So I, w I did what I didn't want to do, but I sanded the entire thing back down again and repainted it in the weathered wood and salt wash because this is not good. You need to get that off of there and that's what the drawers were all done. So you can see how... I got all down to the blue on those drawers and that's exactly what it needed. Here's a little tip for if you don't want the paint to get into those ridges of your can, go ahead and take some painter's tape and then I just fold it over to make a point. There was a little bit of my ridge hanging out there so I added a bit more tape. And then pour your paint onto a plate or in a bowl taking the DIY brush and then just wiping the painter's tape off and you will not have any paint in those ridges. So now that I got the paint all poured out, this weathered wood is dried for the second time. I went ahead and I added the beadboard. This is DIY beadboard. It's my favorite white color in the DIY line. And I put that on. I did not care if I was missing some areas because I wanted that weathered look anyway. And so I just went ahead and added paint to the entire cabinet. I want this cabinet to have a signage look to it. So I took my wall cuts stencil, which there will be a link below on where I order my stencils from. And uh, this was a couple different size stencils that I had. These are Fresh Flower Market stencil and a couple other ones that I used. But I'm using the JRV stencil brush, which is a lifesaver when it comes to stenciling. I do sell the JRV stencil brushes on my website. If you haven't ordered one they, and you do a lot of stenciling, this will make really less work of your stencil job. I wasn't sure that it would or not, but I've used, um, I ordered one from Jamie and yes, it makes a huge difference when you're stenciling. So I went ahead and I just stenciled the top side there, taping the stencil down, and then I moved it to the side. I want to keep that stencil um, going around to the side. It did wiggle a little bit, so I had to remove the tape and then re-tape it. 
So I go ahead and I take that tape off and I retape some of the areas on the side, matching it up to make sure that it just flows right around the side of that cabinet. I wanted that cabinet to look like it was made from an old um, sign that was hanging outside and it had a little bit of age to it. So I then went ahead and stenciled on the side of the cabinet to finish that look. I used a different stencil and added some words to the top drawer and just pieced a bunch of different stencils together to um, complete that look going on the top drawer to the side of the cabinet. Now I used a stencil, a different stencil. This was the Backyard Barn Grill stencil, and I laid it on the other side of the cabinet sideways. And uh, this was just to get a little bit different look so that it looked like it was a bunch of boards put together. Then I took that stencil and I wrapped it over the top of the cabinet. When you stencil, you're gonna have some spaces where the stencil that's what it is it needs to be a stencil to have that so what i do is i take the diy little black dress which is what i stenciled with and i mix it with a little bit of water just mist mist the plate a little bit and so you have a thinner paint consistency and i have a little liner brush here so now all I do is I go and uh, fill in where these gaps are. And it makes it not no longer look like a stencil, but more like freehanded. kind of makes that stencil not so cheap looking because sometimes stenciling can look like oh someone took the easy way out and uh, um, stenciled well this way they won't know if you took the stencil way out or if you hand lettered it so there know that that no longer looks like a stencil. I'm going to do the rest of these. Now to get some of that age, I don't want my stencil to be nice and crisp, which um, when you're using the wall cut stencils and the JRV brushes, you will have a nice crisp stencil look. Um, that's not the look I was going for this time. I wanted the old look, so I sanded right over the top of the stencil, and then you can see some of that salt wash is what's helping to bring that weathered wood to the top and give them drawers a nice age look to them, but a little of the weathered wood coming from underneath. I'm going to use a little apothecary with my DIY little dipper brush and I'm going to paint the inside of these cabinets and cover up that green color that was in there before just giving it a softer updated green color. The little dipper brush is nice because it goes right in the eight ounce jars. You don't have to worry about 
lapping all over the jar. Okay, let's try this again. Good thing I'm painting outside. I dropped this jar of paint. It went everywhere. Good thing it's DIY paint and it just all washes up. So concrete got washed. I took a shower. My clothes are in the washing machine. We're all good. I think this apothecary is only going to need one coat. Inside the drawers, we're going to use the DIY Cottage Colors. This is a one-step paint, so I'm not going to have to seal inside those drawers, and it's going to be a nice, um, sturdy coat of paint for whatever the person decides to put in there. So. This goes on the same as DIY clay-based paint, and uh, this has a really nice coverage as well. This is the Maricona color, which is almost like Apothecary, so it's pretty darn close. I am using my DIY really, really soft paintbrush, which you want to make sure that you're very careful. You have to wash them out as soon as you're finished using them. But if I have to do two or three coats, I take a baby wipe and I wipe, I wrap my brush in a baby wipe and then I seal it with Glad cling wrap. And then it stays nice and moist and doesn't dry out until I can get the next coat. But as soon as I'm done with all two or three coats that I'm using, then I will go ahead and wash the brush out so that it doesn't get all gunked up in there because it will it will cause your soft DIY brush to harden and not be able to get clean. This is covering very well and again this is a one step paint so if you don't want to do a second coat like if you don't want to wax or seal it this is a good paint to use. Here's a visual of how I seal up my brush. I put a baby wipe down, I wrap it in the baby wipe, and then I wrap it in the um, cling wrap. And at this, I only do in between my coats. Uh, as soon as I'm done painting my project, my brush gets washed out because otherwise you will ruin your brush. I have the DIY clear wax that I'm going to use on this project. Um, big top or clear wax, I'm a lover of both of them. I'm just using a old brush that I had and putting the wax on there. Everything has been all sanded and the paint dust has been taken off so you're not smearing around some black dust or um, anything like that, like paint dust. And you're just going to put this clear wax on. The DIY clear wax, I've used a lot of waxes in my painting times. and. The DIY clear wax is the best. It goes on very smooth and you don't have to buff it off until 24 hours. That's the good thing about using the clear is some of the other ones you have to buff it off right away and it's hard to get off. This one, it dries and it just, it buffs off really super easy. So it changes the color just a bit not much on a white piece, but you can see a little bit right here. This is not waxed and this is. So it's changing in just a little bit and it'll go, it'll darken it up and then it'll go back to being a little bit lighter again. The great thing about adding clear wax or any wax to your project is because you can get a little bit creative with some of the other colored waxes. We're going to go on with some clear right over top of these drawers are really changing. They're getting a bit more age to them because of the sanding that I did. And that's what I wanted. I wanted them to look old. Like this cabinet was built 
with a bunch of old signage boards. That was the look I was going for. We're gonna clear this front up and then I'm gonna use some DIY dark wax and I'll show you how I put that on. Right when the clear wax is still wet. You wanna make sure that the clear wax has still got some wetness to it. This was done in the JRV paint, so it does not have to be clear waxed. It has a built-in sealer, so no wax is required, which is the good thing. Now I'm gonna go in with my wax brush, my dark wax brush, and I put a little bit on here. And I'm going to add a little bit of depth to some of these areas and darken it up. Like there's been a little bit of age. Um, it, here the knob is right there. And uh, so obviously someone might have had their greasy fingers in there. So you're gonna put this dark wax wherever you think there might be a little bit of age. Wherever that salt wash is under there, it's also going to pick up that depth. And then you take a dry, clear, lint-free cloth and buff over the top of it. And you're gonna take some of that dark back off. You can see we're taking some of that dark wax back off again. Here's a little bit too harsh of a line. So I'm gonna dip into my clear wax with my soft towel and go over the top and you can kind of smooth that line out a bit. It acts as an eraser, the clear does, and you can erase some of that dark. Now we added a little bit of depth to that, to the front of this. And I really like the way it's working. Can't wait till I see it all done. Here is the finished product. It has the wax on it. It's dried 24 hours, so the wax no longer feels sticky. Just a little bit on the sticky side. There's two ways to buff out the wax. So you can take a dry paper towel and you're going to, you're gonna rub back and forth on the piece of furniture with a dry paper towel. And it, you can rub as much as you want. You're not gonna take it all off, but you're gonna get a different type of a shine the more that you rub on this. Once you have most of it buffed off, it's going to feel real slick and smooth. It's going to be a really, really nice finish. I really like the finish of wax versus the big top but I also use a lot of big top and I don't mind that finish either. So this is two different ways to seal your furniture is using big top or the clear and dark wax. This one I like for that grungy look. It gave it a nice kind of a grungy old dirty look. It looks like it was just a bunch of signage that was used to make this cabinet. I did paint the knobs black and wax them as well. You're just gonna go ahead and take your paper towel and buff those knobs to a nice kind of a matte shine. And then they'll go back on right where they came off and we'll go, they'll set in really, really well with this piece. The second way that you can buff your wax off is with this Pixie Buffing Brush. It's kind of expensive, but it's definitely worth it if you use a lot of wax and furniture. If you got big furniture, this takes a lot of the grunt work out of the waxing, the buffing process. So you just take this brush and go back and forth on the product. and that'll buff it to that same shine as the paper towel. It doesn't take much. This DIY wax does not take much to buff off. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are looking for any projects to do this summer with DIY paint or any of the other products that I used here today, head on over to my website at thepaintedphotographer.com. I'd 
love to see all the comments that you give me. I try to reply as fast and as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and give me a subscribe if you like this type of video. And hopefully I can have more for you. Thanks again. And until next time, happy painting.